Doesn't it get so frustrating when you jump out of your posture as soon as you hit that golf ball and it causes those tops? golf shots, or any poor golf shot in fact. Well in today's video I'm going to be guiding you through a step-by-step, -step, easy, simple method to help you stay down in the golf swing. So before we dive into this, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Harry. I'm a golf teacher professional here to help you improve and transform your golf game. So I'd consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell icon to all if you do take these tips and drills on board in your own game and it also helps me post more content like this. And as I'm guiding you through this easy and simple method, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the weight percentage in the swing from backswing all the way down into the follow through. As this comment came in a couple of weeks ago as he was suffering with jumping out of his posture and he was struggling to understand where the weight percentage should be throughout the swing. So what we want to see in that golf swing, just like the pros do this, able to stay over the golf ball for a lot longer in that swing, is that as we make our way into the top of the swing, you can see here that as I'm rotating from this camera angle here, you can see that my back is facing towards the target. We can see my sternum moves ever so slightly off the center point if we were to draw a line here directly towards the golf ball. And I just repeat this action. I'm rotating into the very top of my swing. So there's a lot of movement taking place there in the actual golf swing as we build our way up into the top of the swing. But if we were to take a look from the side on view, and I just make that move again, and if we were to draw a line from where my butt cheek is and my glutes are, what's happening here? I'm still able to cover or touch this line behind me. I'm not jumping out of my posture just like this here. I'm able to stay centered in my posture on this 45 degree angle as I make my way up to the top of the swing. And then the same for the downswing. You can see as I make my way through in this point here, I'm still able to get at least one of my glutes to touch the line behind me up until around this point here. And then it's just the finish off. The right heel lifts up and then we're into our finished position. And how the percentage should work is at the beginning, we should be able to feel 50-50 weight distribution just to begin with the setup, especially if you've got something like an eight or seven iron, making our way up into the back swing, we're looking at more 70 to 80% into the trail side of the body. As we begin to rotate into the down swing, we're then pushing that more to the 80, maybe possibly 90% as we lift that trail heel up into the follow through position. And what we tend to see so many golfers do when they jump out of the posture, they either do this in the back swing well, they do this in the transition phase of that downswing before it comes to making contact with that golf ball. So what they'll do is they'll get to the very top of their swing and they'll still be able to get a reasonable amount of rotation, but not enough to quite keep the hips back enough and the glutes back enough. So as they make their way up to the top of the swing, they'll begin to extend upwards like this here, working their way up to the top of the swing. This is you if you do extend early and jump out of the posture early into the top of the backswing. But for those of you who do this, as we make our way into the downswing part, we're able to get this backswing in a great position. We almost try and push upwards, fire the hip towards the target. We begin to lean out of that posture a little bit, extend upwards. You can see that my knees are straightening too early and then I'm extending upwards to the golf ball from there. So bringing in now how we fix this, the simple way. So taking the club away, and I'm gonna place my hands either side of my thighs just like this here. And when I set up now, as if I was to make that golf swing, all I'm going to do is allow myself to get the correct amount of rotation into the top of the back swing, just to help with the weight distribution and the transition, the percentages either side, as I mentioned earlier, but also, if we're not quite getting that rotation, as I mentioned earlier, it's very easy for us to extend upwards into that backswing. So this first part is gonna be great for those of you who struggle with getting that jumpy motion on the way back, and we're gonna be looking at how we can maintain this on the downswing, how to stop this in the downswing. That almost sounded like we wanted that extension then, didn't it? Right. So hands either side of my thighs, just like this here. And all I'm going to do is allow my trail arm to roll up to my right hip and my left arm, my lead arm to roll down to my left knee as I get my back to face towards the target. 
And if I get my back to face towards the target and do this action, you can see that that's actually pushing my right glute further back. It feels to me like I'm pushing it further back towards the wall behind me. You can see that there's a little bit more flexion taking place in that lead knee as my right knee begins to extend. It doesn't quite extend fully. If we get this extension in the right knee fully, that's gonna cause us to get a little bit stuck. And you can see from there, all I can do is begin to lift upwards. So we still want to see a little bit of flexion in that trail knee. So that was a bit of the question from the comment that came in. So we've gotta be making sure as we're doing this motion here, rotating into that top of the back swing position, we're just ensuring that we're keeping that pressure in this right knee here. We're not allowing it to extend and go away. So keeping that right knee ever so slightly flexed, right hand lifts up, left hand goes down as we get in that back to face towards the target. You can see here as I'm doing this, that's allowing me to keep this shoulder plane as opposed to getting those shoulders to lateral and again, jumping out of that posture. So working our way up to the very top of the swing, as we make our way into the downswing, how we maintain this is very, very important. So once we're in the very top of the swing here, all we're going to do from here is allow this left hand to lift up, to go in towards my left hip and the right hand to go down towards my right knee. So we're working opposites on the way through and allowing that chest to rotate towards the target. So this in action, we're up at the top of the swing here. So the left hand lifts up, right hand goes down, chest works towards the target, and then I'm making my way through to finish here. So now I'm really stretching this out. And you can see if I was just to do that action again, on the way through, I'm able to continue touching this line behind me as I'm doing this action here, but on the way through that really feels a little bit more awkward in comparison to the back swing, just because we're really stretching this out a bit more on the way through. At this point, we're so used to lifting that right heel as well, but that can take place once we start to feel that stretch in our lower left side. Again, I'm able to maintain this shoulder plane on the way through, but one of the key checkpoints here is something I mentioned regarding what we should be doing beforehand, and that was on the way down, we don't want to see this sternum shifting forward. We don't want to see the sternum staying behind the golf ball. The sternum is the center point. And we want to keep that center point relatively at the golf ball, assuming that the ball position is in the middle of the stance. So on the way through, as I'm doing this action here, you can see that I'm allowing my hips to rotate round as opposed to pushing myself forward. Yes, we still want to see that sternum go ever so slightly ahead of the golf ball from this line here on the screen. We don't want to see them go way too far ahead. That's not how we're going to get that weight transfer, the percentage of the weight transferring onto that left side. How we're going to do it is by rotating and giving that chest to face towards the target. You'll be able to feel the pressure moving from the trail side to the lead side in that downswing. And just before we take a club and start using some drills doing this, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to GX Golf, the sponsor to the channel. They provide high quality golf clubs for a fraction of the price in comparison to the rest on the market. So if you're ever in the market for looking out for a new golf club, I'd recommend using my discount code and checking out their site using the link in the description below. So taking the club now then and making a couple of swings doing this, it will feel very strange at first. So if you wanted to try using a little tee just beneath the golf ball to begin with, that is absolutely fine. But just before we start hitting some shots, we've got to rehearse this motion using the golf club very slowly and then we can start to build this up. So as I make my way, into my posture and setup to ensure that we're doing this action correct i'm just trying to get that same sensation of my trail hand lifting up towards the hip as my lead hand goes towards the knee so that same feeling of allowing that rotation and my back to get to face towards the target and you can see there as i'm doing this action i'm going nice and slow just ensuring i'm keeping the club in a nice position throughout the backswing and i'm ensuring now that that hip is staying back here, as opposed to extending upwards. That's when we get the jumping motion. So from this point here, moving away into the downswing, 
I'm allowing that left hip to rotate away, getting my chest to target, feeling that sensation now of the right hand going down as the left lifts up, into impact here, continue rotating and then working away through to finish. And if we were just to replay that entire swing from this camera angle here in slow-mo, you can see that I was able to keep my butt cheeks, my glutes on that line behind me. As soon as they lift up, that's when we start jumping out and then causing those poor golf shots. So once you've built this up, give yourself 10 to 15 shots, building this up from 10%, 20%, 30%, all the way up to around your on course speed. The faster you swing, the harder this is going to be to maintain. So I'm going to introduce another drill now to help you maintain this position when you're doing this at speed. And that is by using a stool or a chair. I'm going to place a stool or chair directly behind me, just like this here, just ensuring that I've got enough room to be able to just touch the chair if I can do, just to really exaggerate things and challenge yourself. When you make your way into your backswing, you're just going to try and almost sit on that chair, not quite by bending the knees too much like this here, but as I make my way into the backswing, I'm just trying to get my glutes or my thigh because it's a little bit too small for me being a tall golfer. But I'm trying to get my thigh to touch that chair and then my left thigh to touch the chair on the way through. So trail thigh to touch the chair, lead thigh to touch the chair or stool that you're gonna be using. So hitting a couple of shots, really doing this at speed, right thigh, left thigh on the way through. And again, with me exaggerating that there, that wasn't the best of strikes at all. It's just a matter of getting used to doing this motion and exaggerating it at speed. So same again, just hitting a couple of more, getting used to that. You can also then really exaggerate the way you tilt over the golf ball if you wanted to really push this even more so. So tilting over the golf ball, this is gonna require us taking the club away just to begin with. We're still gonna have the stall in place. But as you make your way into the top of the golf swing to really exaggerate you maintaining that posture that spine angle on the way through if you want to really really ramp up that speed and start hitting some drives doing this straight away we could i won't recommend this if you're not jumping out of it but if you still are give this a try so from the top of the swing you're just going to really push your belt buckle imagine someone's pushing your belt buckle back and as you're pushing that belt buckle back that's when we can begin that movement on the way through. So left thigh touches, you can see how much more over the golf ball I am here. Very, very awkward. Feels like I'm gonna be hitting the ground first even more so, but that's just to really exaggerate that movement. So if you're still struggling with this and you film yourself from the side on camera angle and you get to the very top of your swing and you find that you're jumping out the way, then what we can do instead is really force that belt buckle back so almost push the stool over and then encourage that rotation on the way through and almost hold the angle. When you start making a couple of swings, 100% swing speed, because you go in so quickly and due to gravitational force in the goal swing, you'll be able to lift yourself back up and get that centre strike more often, just as you get used to this. Again, I don't keep saying it, but it is a matter of time for you to get used to this. So there's some really good drills there that you can use to be able to get those movements in your golf swing. One here, two here with the stool, and then three, that final one that I've just mentioned there. And tracking all the numbers today, I'm using a Trackman IO, which is one of the best launch monitors out there on the market currently. However, if you're looking at trying to work on that weight transfer and understand where the pressure is moving even more, I recommend having a look at the Unicore pressure plates and setup as this really helps you identify where the feet are moving and the pressure points are in both of your feet. So just to finish off on one final shot, really getting that sensation, I'm just going to focus on trying to put those first two into action and see if I can stay over in my goal swing. Let's get a slow-mo from this camera angle straight after I hit it just to see. So what do we think of that one? So as I made my way into the backswing, it was a pretty good position. As I made my way into the downswing, I was very close to touching that stall and I began to lift up into my follow-through position. So I could work on that a little bit more myself 
to help me improve that ball striking. But for those of you who are gonna take these tips and drills on board and found this video useful, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to all. Again, it just helps me post more content like this to help you improve your game. And why not comment down below the tips or drills topic you'd like me to cover next. And now we've got this movement trying to stay down in the goal swing working in your favor. How can we just ensure that we're getting the strike? Is there anything else that we can start to work on to help you improve that aspect, especially with the irons? Well, I highly recommend checking either of these two videos out over here on the screen to help you further improve. So be sure to check one of them out and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.